Hey guys, welcome back. Andrew here with Ambient Endeavors, and we're coming right up to NAM. Uh, the show is next week. This is kind of the time of the year where a lot of brands will announce and release new products. And Walrus has took a splash and announced a whole new line of pedals. Uh, you might have seen the leak a week or two ago from Reddit or the gear page. But today's the day officially where they've announced their fundamental line of effects. So they sent over the drive, the delay, and the reverb for me to check out. And I kind of thought it'd be fun to just write another post-rock tune and sort of dub this video a response to another um, mini pedal board post-rock video I did. Uh, this time leaning into a more budget-friendly rig, to be honest. So we're going to um, check out a number of sounds from each of these pedals and the combination uh, towards the end in an extended sound sample section. But uh, we'll spend a few minutes just talking about the line and um, what you can expect from the fundamentals line of pedals here. So one of the things I think is really cool about this line and that Walrus is doing this line is that it kind of opens up the door to create sounding effects um, to more players. So maybe you're an acoustic player um, making a transition into electric and you need to set up a board or get a rig going. Maybe you're a brand new um, player and just starting out on electric guitar and want to experiment with some sounds. Or maybe you're a parent of uh, a younger kid who's picking up the guitar and starting to learn and get excited and you want to kind of support that and encourage that uh, with some fun new toys but you don't want to spend a boatload of money. Uh, this fundamental series is really a good way to do that. All the effects are starting at $99, so it's around that you know price point. Um, you can for sure get effects that are cheaper than this. Um, you can also spend three or four times the amount of money on these types of effects. And what Walrus brings is close to a decade of um, designing and refining some of these sounds and these algorithms. And then they've done a really good job, I think, packaging uh, them into these products in this line um, where you get some really foundational sounds um, in each of the pedals but you don't have an overload of features or sounds or uh, sort of confusing or cumbersome um, interfaces to to get past you know i was reading an article too where colt westbrook from walrus was kind of talking about how cool it is to look back on some of the series of pedals that uh, we kind of went through as players um, on our journey of tone and I can remember the very first pedal I got one of the first pedals at least was um, from the Dan Electro uh, mini pedal line it was something like a it was an Ottawa I think of all things and all the pedals in that line had food related names I can't remember what it was called but just kind of cool to see how different companies have popped up and done these types of effect lines at different points and how they can meet players early on in their journey of tone. Um, I've got a few still in the collection here that I, I play and use occasionally. Um, so here's another Dan Electro, their Fab Echo. I think these are like $17 or something. I modded this one to have a, a time control. We have the elephant in the room, the bad monkey. Uh, I picked up one of these a couple years ago after getting rid of mine uh, that I had originally, but another really awesome overdrive pedal that I think was like 40 or 50 bucks back in the day. And then these Ibanez Tone Lock pedals, the DE7 is sort of a cult classic too, a great sounding um, delay pedal, has a bunch of range. Um, in terms of delay time and things like that, but another cool series that at the time it was a sort of accessible, a budget friendly line of pedals. So Walrus is kind of entering that uh, territory with these uh, fundamental effects pedals. They're cool. They decided to go with these uh, lateral sliders, which are kind of fun. Um, there's top mounted jacks on all of them and you get three modes of each of the sounds here. So on the reverb, you get a hall, spring, and a plate. The delay has digital, analog, and a reverse mode. And then the drive has three different flavors of overdrive. Uh, the one bummer to me, um, don't hate me for saying this, but the top mounted jacks are awesome, but when you put the power jack on the side, that's kind of a bummer. So um, it's not as space saving as I had hoped, um, but I think there's still uh, a cool uh, element to their design here and the sliders are kind of a fun um, diversion from just your typical pedal knobs. So what are some of the selling points uh, to this line of pedals in my opinion? I like that they limited 
you to three different modes on each of the pedals and three different control sliders. You can get in a situation with some of these lower end uh, budget friendly pedals where you have a say a $60 pedal and it's got 10 different modes. Um, I think what you often find, what I've often found is that despite having a bunch of different sounds, they all kind of sound pretty similar and you end up kind of feeling like you've got 10 of the same types of reverb even though you have 10 different options. And similarly, having just three um, sliders and three settings to worry about is, is really um, nice for players that are just getting into effects for people that don't really want to have to remember what each control does or um, fine tune everything to the nth degree. So I think having three sliders and three modes on each of these pedals is great. Um, I think the reverb, the delay, the drive, they all sound really solid. I think it was really easy to find good sounds on each of the pedals. Um, one of my favorite things about the reverb pedal is that you can do this max decay thing if you move the slider all the way to the right. And you can kind of create this like washy ambient um, pad of, of sounds to play over. I think that's really cool for me who enjoys ambient and post rock music. Um, it's a feature that not all the reverbs you find um, have and that's cool. Uh, each of the sounds on the reverb pedal I thought were distinct and, and nice uh, and having the tone knob there too as one of the sliders was a great uh, option. The delay I thought was specifically impressive. Again, I think each of the modes had something unique to offer. I really love that they decided to add uh, or to include the reverse. Again, you don't always get a reverse delay sound, so that was a cool add to kind of give you a couple really solid standard delay sounds like digital and analog, and then also give you a more experimental sound in the reverse. I also love that they figured out how to use, uh, to include tap tempo. So if you hold down the switch, you enter the tap tempo mode and then you can tap in the pedal, uh, the tempo with the pedal there and select uh, one of three subdivisions even too. So that was a great feature. I think the delay was really nicely packaged. You get a lot uh, in it. Um, and again, it's still simple and still uh, really easy to use. The drive pedal to me I thought was a really uh, good cross section of overdrive sounds. I did find it a little bit hard to find really nuanced low gain sounds, um, but they're in there and there's some, um, some cool flavors of overdrive from really warm smooth textures on that um, mode to really kind of bright crisp articulate sounds in that mode. Uh, the middle of the crunch mode I thought was really cool for thick kind of power chord type stuff or big rhythm guitar. Um, yeah, I think it excels a little bit more in the mid to uh, higher gain sounds. Uh, not that it's a huge distortion pedal, um, but that there was a little more um, range and kind of interesting tones up as you dialed the, the drive up and a little bit less range in like the lower gain mode. So if you're looking for a really great like transparent or low gain overdrive, this might not be an awesome option. Uh, but again, I think it really covers a lot of bases with the three modes and you have a really a pretty wide sweep of gain and tone uh, in each of the modes too. So there it is, that's kind of a brief overview of what to expect at least from these three pedals. Definitely go check out some of the other demos folks are making um, with the whole line. Uh, I know Mark Johnston has a full board that he's walking through a number of uh, the pedals with too. And uh, yeah, check out the line and, and maybe you find a couple of effects that you have holes in your board or in your rig for and, and it's a good um, way for you to experiment and play around with some of those effects without a huge upfront investment. So we're just gonna kind of end this video with a pretty extended sound samples section where you can just hear a bunch of different sounds and combinations of sounds with these three pedals. I'm using my Balaguer um, Ambient Select Espada guitar. So there's humbuckers in that that you'll hear, mainly the bridge um, humbucker there. And we'll run the three pedals into a UA Dream uh, for my amp. It's all in mono. Each of these pedals are in mono, um, but I think uh, I still need to do a video uh, talking about the mono versus stereo debate, but I think it keeps it really simple for players getting into these types of effects and these pedals and, and not have to worry about unique cabling or signal routing or things like that. So mono in, mono out. We're going mono into the dream and uh, check out the sounds and see how they sound.